Yes, Lord, we celebrate your goodness tonight. Come on. Welcome to Psalm for the Day. Psalm for the Day is coming to you live from the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Central Parish, Abuja. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, mighty God, King of Kings, we are grateful for the opportunity you have given to us to read the psalm for the day and meditate on it. Speak to us and give us understanding from above in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Psalm chapter 7 from verses 11 to 16. I read, God judged the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, he will wet his sword. He had bent his bow and made it ready. He has also prepared for the instrument of death and he ordained his arrow against the persecutors. Behold, he travelled with iniquity and had conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. He made a pit and digged it and is fallen into the ditch which he made. His mischief shall return upon him, upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come upon his head. This psalm is traceable to the root of David's persecution by King Saul and indeed his son Absalom. A lot of courtiers from King Saul's palace gave counsel to King Saul that he should keep watch over David because it was assumed that David was going to overthrow King Saul. David was falsely accused of plotting to overthrow King Saul. In fact, a, ling, a ringleader by name uh, Cush of the Benjamite tribe, of the same tribe with King Saul, facilitated the processes for the persecution of uh, David. David knew he was falsely accused, but what else could he do? Several times, we as Christians have faced with similar situation in our Christian life, falsely accused of things we never knew of. Indeed, if as Christians you are falsely accused, what will you do? Ordinarily, as a human being, you would like to take uh, revenge. Reacting to a situation of false accusation could be the right thing to do by others, but not by David, and certainly not by you, who is a child of God. Like David, you ought rather to turn to God Almighty, your maker, to vindicate you. Why should David or you turn to God? God because God himself said, Vengeance is mine. And as St. Paul, under the leading of the Holy Spirit, wrote, Dearly beloved, do not avenge yourself, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. But often a time we either think God is too slow in taking vengeance or God does not take vengeance at all. But a key point is that in the verse where we read is that the Bible says we should give place to wrath, which means the only way God can avenge for us is for us to allow insults, disgrace, shames, disappointment to be saturated in your body to the extent which it will lead to provoke God to rise up to your defense. In other words, 
allow those wrath to mature to the level of where God will fight for you. When the enemy's provocation reaches the threshold of maturity, producing enough evidence before God, God will rise to fight for you. In other words, God is also giving the enemy the opportunity to repent. If not, he was going to face a revenge uh, that he, the enemy, will not recover from. Most of the time we react to little insults, making it difficult for the wrath of God to mature to the level of defending us. Several occasions, David should have taken vengeance against Saul. He restrained himself because first, God um, never told him to take uh, revenge against Saul because Saul was anointed of God. Even if he was to take revenge against Saul, he must not do so to an anointed child of God. So David avoided taking revenge against Saul. David was brought up under the Jewish law to hear and obey the word of God. In fact, the Bible says, Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Therefore, devil believed that God is a righteous God and God will judge for the righteous. He will not allow the wicked to go free. In fact, the Bible says from the verse 11 where we read, the Bible says God is constantly angry with the wicked. God will judge the wicked God will judge the wicked. He is a just God. He will punish the wicked. He will not allow the wicked to go free. In fact, before he punishes the wicked, the Bible says that David, that God employs what we call military war strategy, show of force, as he demonstrated. He said, first of all, he would um, sharpen his word against the wicked to show the wicked that if you don't repent I will use my sword against you. He also said that he will bow down and demonstrate his readiness to shoot at the wicked. He also prepared instrument of death against the wicked. And he, the Bible says he ordained arrows, anointed arrows to deal with the wicked. All this we call them show of force. God wanted the enemy, the wicked, to know that he's ready to deal with him if he doesn't repent. Why is God demonstrating a military strategy for show of force against the wicked? He is taking his time for the wicked to change, for the wicked to repent because he's a merciful God. But unfortunately, the wicked is hardened. And when the wicked is hardened in his wickedness, the extent to which God can forgive him um, is no more there. Because when the wicked is hardened his heart, it goes to the extent of traveling with iniquity. Traveling here means the wicked labor. He toils in sin, in iniquity, spend all his time, resources, power to harm the righteous. Number two, the wicked perpetually conceive mischiefs against the weak, against the righteous, and allow himself to be deceived against the righteous. Lastly, the wicked believes in falsehood against the righteous. When you put all these things together, they are all indications that the wicked would have to be punished by God. Therefore, God decides that the seed of the wicked shall suffer the consequences of their actions. One, the pit that he has dug for the righteous, he will fall into it. Number two, his mischief shall return back to his head. Number three, his violent dealings shall come down upon him. The purpose of punishing the wicked is to establish God's standard of righteousness to those who do wickedly. Sometimes, and most of us who believe in uh, the fact that when you cause the wicked, you are uh, ex is what they call hate speeches and hate languages. No. It is a declaration against the wicked not to continue with his act of wickedness against the righteous. I'm believing God that God himself will defend us in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 6 says, seeing it is righteous thing with God to recompense uh, uh, seeing it is righteous thing with God to recompense 
tribulation to them that trouble you. So anybody that troubles you, you don't have to take revenge. Just wait for God. God will address your situation. God will fight it for you. God will defend you. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the word that has been spoken, assuring us that we should not take revenge because you are there every time to fight our battle. You are there every day getting angry with the wicked and the wicked will suffer the consequences of their action. We look up to you, Lord, continue to fight our battle in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.